spotted some tuna or mackerel out here. Um, I haven't even got anywhere, but it's game on, I reckon. There are, uh, not, not sure if they're tuna or mackerel. And, oh, there's one. This is actually the first time I've used this, uh, this rod and reel. I've only just rigged it up. Oh, there they are. There they are. Oh, they look like they're little tuna. Come on, come on. I haven't even got halfway to my destination. I've missed that first lot, but there's another lot. Oh, there, there you go. Um, yeah, we're gonna try and get one. I'd really love to smoke a tuna. It's cool. <laughs> okay. Haven't even had time to put my shirt on yet. Oh, they're over there, they're over here. Oh, this um, new setup definitely cast nice. So I'm not sure my lure is gonna be the right size. Oh, I think one just had a go. Oh, they're having a look, they're having a look. Oh, and he missed it. There's a lot of people ask me about what gear I'm always using, and I just literally just bought this uh, a couple of days ago. It's the um, Ed X 4000 by Daiwa, and it's a rod and reel combo. Pretty good. Uh, I think I might have got the last one in the shop. I'm running 20 pound um, Suffolk 382, I believe, braid, and 30 pound leader. Oh, breaking everywhere. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, nothing. Oh, I might try the fly rod. This is just too big for them. I've only got a small selection of flies. Um, let's see. We'll use that one there. So I haven't cast a fly rod in about, oh, I'd say over a year now. It's been been way too long. And the cast I need is going to be pretty much the whole fly line. That's how much line I've got out. This little pattern is a much better imitation of the food they're chasing. Here we go. This is it. Oh. Oh, I've got a knot in the line. Sometimes with tuna you're literally wasting your time because they just won't eat. I'm going to have one last go. Oh yeah, they're jumping. Okay, that's in the zone. And as soon as my line hits the water they go down. i got some other fish. Oh. Anyway, let's give up on this. Bit of a headland here, lots of bommies. There you go. Okay, set the drag and let's see what we can get. Oh, I reckon we'll get more coral trout and reef fish today. It's um, quite small tides and that means the pelagics are probably out of the reef somewhere. Yep, oh, that was a coral trout. Ah, oh, missed him. I'll go there again. There, there could be a bigger one there. Actually, they, they do often hang around together. So, that's pretty much the spot. A little closer to the, the bommy than before. I just let it... Oh, 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 he had another go. Oh, that might have been a second one. Oh, I was just going to let the lure sink down and he tried to grab it. Oh, what have we got? GTs, GTs, GTs. Come on, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, 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 oh the lure's tangled. Oh, the lure got tangled. There's about three or four GTs there. Let's see if they'll come again. Oh, man. It's only early. I have to tell myself that. Calm down. Just because I miss a couple of fish here and there. I'll get more later. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, yes. GTs again. Come on, eat it. Eat it. Oh, they're not. It's too big for them. Oh, he tried. He tried. He tried. Oh, I can see a nice sized black tip shark swimming in the shallows there. Let's see if we can catch him. Yep, he's on it. Oh, come on, eat it. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Eat it, come on, eat it. We'll get him right to the boat at least. Here he is, look at this. About six foot. There he is. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh that would have been a fight and a half. Got him, got him, got him. Oh, oh, that's a reef fish, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I've got lots of drag on this reel, so there won't be any anything going out. 
Oh, I think it's a coral trout. Let's hope he's big enough. Oh. Woo. After so many misses. Oh. Yeah, it's definitely coral trout. 38 centimeters he needs to be. You know what? I reckon he might go. Oh, we might have coral trout smoked for probably dinner. Woo. That is on the zero and he is 42 and a half. Close to 43, there you go. Beautiful. You are gonna be smoked later on, buddy. Wow, cool. First thing I do is I always cut their throat. I'll show you exactly where. There's the gills and the heart is just down, down from that. So he should bleed out nicely. Then I'll put him on ice and I'll show you the rest later, but putting him on ice stiffens him up so I can fill it in. So yeah, hard work casting these big lures. Rewarding, but hard work. Camp spot, beautiful sandy beach, and uh, yeah, we'll set up first, and then we'll go exploring. I think. Oh, beautiful day today. Have a look. Not a cloud in the sky. Actually, I lie. There's one one little cloud over there. That's all I can see. <laughs> Would I have more stuff? <laughs> It'll be a nice comfy night. The tides are pretty small, so most of the beach will stay dry. So I don't have to go too far up, I don't think. Let's have a look. I think there might be a bit of flat ground over here. Yeah, this looks good. Camping spot with a view. Look at that. Beautiful white sandy beach. Turquoisey blue sort of water. And for those of you that watch me all the time and pay attention, you'll know this is episode 500. That's why I've gone a little bit overboard with the camping gear. I want to have a really nice, comfortable, um, nice food and just a really nice experience for my 500th upload. That's a lot of uploads. Eight years I've been doing this. Oh, the weather is just, just perfect. Who would have thought I'd need so much stuff? I could probably stay a few days with this stuff. Let me know if you think I should do this, um, yeah, for like two or three days or longer. How luxurious is this kitchen? Look at it, heaps of space. But you say, hang on a minute, there's a hole here. Well, you can either put a table barbecue in or the cutting board. So I'm not cutting on the nice bamboo tops. Chuck this in here. There you go, ready for cooking. Before we get too excited about cooking that fish up, I'm gonna let it get a little bit stiffer. Just gonna have a bit of a snack. I got banana, watermelon, and nice smoked chicken leg. So it's, uh, it's really nice just to have a little relax. Camp is set up. I can uh, explore till dark. Check it out. Only one here. Mm. Beautiful. A little bit of shade from the casuarina here. Could actually do with a bit of rain. There's um, yeah, a lot of trees at the back here that have no, no leaves on them at all. It's quite dry. I've just dragged the boat in because the tide's coming up and I don't want to have to swim out there when I go fishing later. But let's go for an explore up this way. 
Here's something interesting. This shell has popped out of the ground. Look at that. That's a live shell. Um, I don't know, maybe the, the ground's a little too warm for him. Let's just chuck him in the water. There you go. Here's a crab that's washed up ashore. He's definitely dead. I'm going to say he is... Um, oh, I can't remember the name of these guys. I'll, um, I'll put a graphic here, but yeah. Poor little guy. Hey, you know what? I always wonder what happened when you, f when you find a dead crab. Anyway, something will eat him. So this is one end of the beach. We've got a few little rocks here with uh, really old oysters. Nothing, nothing alive. Um, the rocks are quite small. And yeah, there doesn't seem to be too many live oysters here. Maybe try the other end of the beach. Yeah, we've got some cool mangroves. We'll have a little poke around here. This actually looks like a bit of a creek coming out here. It's definitely not flowing. We've got some, like the mangroves keep going up. We're probably 50, 80 metres from the, the shore now. So this is interesting. And I, I do think it's a creek. I think it comes from up that way and goes down to the ocean. That way you can see the, just see the water through there. Yeah, there's no water in that creek. It's um, very seasonal. I'd say it only flows when it's just been raining. Let's uh, go up the other end of the beach and have a look over there. Here's something pretty cool. These are two brachychiton trees. They're uh, a water bottle tree or a bottle tree. They, uh, the trunks swell up and fill with water. That's why it's so, so wide. It's only a small tree. It's only probably four or five meters high. Okay, we're now at the other end of the beach and found some big rocks. Let's see where this goes and what it looks like. I'm not sure if you can see them, but there's thousands and thousands of little fish in here. I'll see if I can get close enough for you guys to see them. I'll probably freak out when I get close to them. There's like thousands of them. There you go, you can see them moving there. Wow, that's cool. And I've just noticed there's a few oysters here. So what I'm thinking is, tomorrow morning, before the tide's up, we might have some oysters for breakfast. I think there's one. Yeah, there's one right there, actually. Didn't bring any, a knife or anything like that, but... Yeah, they'll, they'll be all through here, I'd say. I think what we'll do is we'll jump back in the boat and go for a little explore, have a fish. And I just thought I'd show you this, this tree one more time. Like, have a look at it. I don't know if you can... You probably can't hear it, but every bee, fly, butterfly, um, insect is, is here because this must be like some of the, the sweetest... Oh, one just got me. So, yeah, you can really smell that, that sweet nectar. They're just flying around everywhere here. Anyway, I find that interesting. We'll go for a fish on the other side of the bay. Go and see what we can see. rigged up a little Domeki 4 inch plastic and I put a little little extra lead on there just to get it down that little bit further. This edge here looks really good for mangrove jack so yeah oysters, rocks, lots of hidey holes. I reckon we'll get one. Oh, another parrotfish. Ah, seem to be pretty prevalent around here. Okay. Hey, off you go buddy. What have we got this time? Another parrotfish. Well, I think it's time to change spots. All I'm catching is these guys. One after the other. There you go. Off you go, buddy. This looks like a nice little secluded spot. We've got some mangroves and a few rocks dotted amongst the mangroves. For this spot, I've chosen the old B-52 Gold Bomber. It's uh, probably only about a metre, metre and a half deep here, so don't need a deep lure. And the water's quite dirty. Whoop, behind the rock there. There we go, perfect. So yeah, water's quite dirty, so I'm using a gold flashy lure. Ah, oh, barracuda. I don't want him. Before he bites me off, we'll get rid of him. That's a barracuda. There he is, hey? 
greedy little thing. Look at the size of the lure compared to the size of the fish. Check this stingray out. Look at that. I can touch him with my rod. Hey, see you critter? That's pretty cool. Just swimming by. Oh, got him, yes. Oh, I think mean it's a cod. Yes, it's a cod. Woo! Ah, actually, he's, he's a nice cod. Look at him. Nice little black spot cod. He's probably, I don't know, 37, 38 centimetres. Hey? Beautiful. Okay, off you go, buddy. Hey, there you go. To say the fishing is slow would be a huge understatement. That cod I caught probably an hour and a half ago. I haven't had anything since then. So I might take the time. I've just pulled out of the wind and prepare the coral trout for smoking. Okay, the coral trout is nice and stiff and actually very cold. Take off the fillets. And what I'll do is I'm going to save the skin for later on. I'm going to cook with the skin and make some little skin chips. Some people might know that as fish skin crackling. So I don't remove the first fillet until I've got both fillets pretty much off the off the backbone. I find that a lot easier. That way the fish keeps its shape and you can find the lateral line and backbone much easier. There we go. We have one fillet and we'll get the second one off real quick. And what I'm also going to do is, I'm going to gut what's left of the coral trout now. There's quite a bit of um, meat on the, they call that the wings, and the cheek, and, and up in here. So we won't waste any of this fish, we're going to smoke the whole lot. There we go, it's the only part of the trout we're not going to cook or eat, just the guts. Give that a wash out, and then it's ready for, for cooking. So then I'm going to skin the fillets. It's pretty easy, just run the knife nice and flat down. Like I said, I'm not going to throw these skins away. I'm keeping the skins. There we go. The final step before we smoke the fish is I've got some salt and brown sugar. I've used Himalayan salt. I've got 40% salt and 60% sugar. This is brown sugar. So what we'll do is, we'll give those fillets a little rinse, just in the ocean, just a tiny little rinse, and then drop them straight into that bag. Um, mix that all around, right, evenly coated in salt and sugar, and we'll put that back into the fridge, or the, the esky in my case. So with the trout skins, I'm going to leave them on the carpet here, scale side down, and put a bit of a hole in that one. But what I want is them to dry out nice and dry. The trout's in the fridge now. It's uh, probably three in the afternoon, maybe a little bit before. And it's really quite hot. The fishing's not going off at all. So I'm just going to chill out here in the mangroves. Have a, an apple, a bit of a snack. And uh, yeah, just, just chill out probably probably half hour, 45 minutes or something like that. But sometimes you just got to, I don't know, just relax a little bit. Especially when it's hot and the, the fishing's not going on. There's no point being frustrated. If the fish aren't biting, the fish aren't biting. So leave it an hour, hour and a half, and yeah, fish could be on again. Ooh, mangroves are coming in. <laughs> There's actually food everywhere you look. Like, I am just chilling out, but you have a look at these guys here. One, two, three snails. Two more there, another three there. Another three there. And some more here. Now there... They're actually pretty good to eat. I've eaten these quite a few times. I'm not going to eat them today. But, yeah, little little snails like that, very nice. Anyway, we'll put him back there. There we are, we're back at the beach. Probably a little later than I wanted to, but that's all right. It means it's not so hot. So the first thing I'm going to do with the smoked fish now that we're back at camp is take it out of the packet and just let it air dry. The next thing is to set up the smoker. 
pretty simple. That's the Uniflame smoker. Got some homemade sawdust. I um, literally just used a chainsaw and made that in about 10 minutes. Oh, five minutes. Start to finish 10 minutes. That'll go on the flame. The fish isn't completely dry, but that's okay. A little moisture is okay. We'll drop that in there and we'll get the fish frame as well. I've just torn that coral trout um, skeleton in half and we'll just cook the whole lot. Well, there we go. And that's it. Close him up. There we go. That's all it takes. I think it's shower time. I've shown you guys this before, but it's been a while, so I'll show you again. It's a really cool little thing for having a shower almost anywhere with just the smallest amount of water. Anyway, come it's on. Here. It's here. a little pump spray. Half a litre, and I've had a really good shower. You're um, out in the middle of nowhere. Ooh, that's rather cool. <laughs> when you're in the middle of nowhere, a little shower like this. Is, uh, yeah, it's great just to get all that salt water, salt spray and sweat off me. Uh, and it looks like the smoke is really going off too. Dinner's going to be ready in about 20 minutes, I reckon. I'll have to make sure that the boat doesn't get stuck um, really high because the high tide now is quite a high high tide and the high tide tomorrow morning is quite low. So I'll actually be pushing the boat out as the tide goes in. Um, so yeah, hopefully I've got a floating boat in the morning. <laughs> oh, but I'll tell you what, it feels good having a shower. Let's have a quick sticky beak and see how that's going. Oh yeah, plenty of smoke. Could probably go a little hotter, I think, so I'll just crank it up a little. While we wait for the smoker, what we'll do is we'll get the frying pan ready and make these coral trout skin chips or crackling. Just turn that down a tad. There's plenty of smoke coming out of there. We'll get some nice oil, put it in the pan. And then we'll cut this skin into strips. Now I thought about scaling it, but the scales are pretty small and I'm not going to worry about it. I figured out that tearing them actually works quite well. Probably better than cutting them. Alright, let's give this a shot. I've never done this before. Okay, that oil's pretty hot now. Let's throw a few in and see what happens. Ooh, frizzle, frizzle. Look at that, they all curled up straight away. They're popping and frizzling. Yeah, I think this is going to work. Well, they look interesting. So I've definitely left the scales on those. I don't think that's going to make any huge difference. Let's try these. Mmm, they look interesting. So here goes my first attempt at coral trout crackling. Not too bad actually. Tastes a little bit like pork crackling crossed with, mm, I'm gonna say a little bit of shrimp or something like that. Yeah. Mmm, they're quite nice. Yeah. Mm. Now please comment whether you've seen other people take the scales off or not. I think scales on. Not a problem at all. Yeah. Mmm. And it is very much like crackling, yeah. Now my next question is, can I put the rest of these in that small amount of oil? The only way to find out is to try it. Let's see. I think if I keep moving, moving them, they, they, yeah, it should work. And that's it, I think. 15 seconds, and they are done. And I'm very certain you can do this with any type of fish. As long as it's got a skin which most fish have, most fish have a skin. Um, I might try this with a whole bunch of different fish. 
again let me know in the comments if you or what what sort of fish you want me to try this with so cheers everybody i had brought this for dinner but this fish crackling why not crackling and a little drinky poo mm. so cool just chillaxing on the beach dinner's almost finished Before it gets too dark, which it probably already is, let's make a little salad. Got some salad mix, green leafy mix. Pretty, pretty easy. Got half an avocado. Salads don't have to be really complex. The hero of tonight's dinner is going to be the smoked fish anyway. But just to make it interesting, we've got some dried tomatoes and some Kalamata olives. A little bit of oil in there as well. The bed will be very comfy, I think, as long as the air mattress doesn't go down. Uh, I, I have a terrible time sleeping on the boat at night, um, rocking, banging every little noise. Um, hopefully the boat's there in the morning. After dinner, I'll probably have another little, uh, yeah, campfire story. I don't know if I'll have a campfire. Probably won't have a campfire tonight. It'll be a little story of my growing up and remembering when I'm in a place like this because it does bring back memories. So dinner is going to be a little bit later because I wanted a bit more colour on the fish. Oh look at the smoke in there. So I've just done a second smoking and that'll be ready in, I don't know, about 10 minutes or so. Let's have a look at what the fish turned out like. Oh that looks pretty good. Uh, hard to see both of them in there but let's let's get that first one out. That'll be my dinner, and the other one I'll take home. Look at that. Beautiful. That was about, I'm going to say about 40 minutes worth of smoking. Probably not picking up the, the colour quite right. It's um, yeah, always a problem for me to film at night. I am getting a, uh, yeah, like a night light. I have ordered one. It hasn't got hit yet, but um, yeah, it's not far away. Dinner's looking pretty good though. Smoked fish with a little salad. I always seem to cook right in the end of the day and then eat when it's night time. Anyway, let's try some of this fish, the coral trout, smoked coral trout. There's a nice piece, the end piece. This is probably going to be the saltiest bit. Mmm. Mmm. Quite nice. Mmm, a little dry right on the end, that, that last little tiny bit. It's probably only three to five millimeters thick. Mm. Let's try another piece a little further up. But yeah, good flavors. I think the 60% um, sugar and 40% salt is, is a good combination. I definitely, definitely reckon that. Maybe next time, let it sit for say three hours instead of like an hour and a half and then maybe wash the outside of the fish I think that would make it oh like you couldn't get any better than that this this is this is delicious it's um I do have a fork but it's just easier picking it off mm, really nice have a little bit of avocado with um mm, an olive mm. Now you saw there wasn't a lot of olives or dried tomatoes in there, but just that little tiny bit of extra flavour just brings another dimension to a dish like this. Smoked fish on its own is really nice, but having that little bit of creaminess from the avocado, the, um, the zing from the olive, it's, yeah, it's really nice. Anyway, I hope to um, do a little bit of fly fishing in the morning. The wind hasn't totally stopped yet. I was hoping it would. There's a yeah, probably an area over there that I could I could have a fly fish. But I think oysters for breakfast. That's that's on the cards. I've also got a uh, bit of extra stuff for for a nice 500th episode breakfast. So we might have two course breakfast. Who knows? Actually, I better go and check on the boat soon too after dinner. 
the tide's dropping, 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 and I don't want to be here left stranded, stranded, stranded. I just had to show you how flaky and white that meat is on the inside, yet yeah, it's smoky and salty and sweet on the outside. Well guys, it's uh, bedtime here. It's I think it's uh, 9, 9.30, something like that. Could even be closer to 10. I've put the boat out four times. I'll show you in the morning how I've done it. Uh, basically, I just don't want to get stuck here till late tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be a really long, long day if, if that happens. Anyway, the bedtime story, the or fire story that I was going to tell you, I, uh, I remembered it when I was, I was here because it happened not far from here. I was fishing off the rocks again with my brother and Ken, a friend, and I think this was well, early high school and all we had was hand lines. We didn't fish with anything else back then. Um, I didn't have lure rods or, or anything like that until towards the end of high school. Anyway, I was fishing off the rocks one morning. I had a literally just a, a herring and a hook and a sinker on a on a 30 pound hand line. And something took it, something big. And I couldn't stop it. And the line was going left, right, left, right. And then it went into the shallows and did this weird tail flip. And it's like, oh wow, that's a big shark. Anyway, I said, hey, Ken, Ken, quick, grab the dinghy, come, come, and, come and pick me up off the rocks, because I was fishing off some rocks. So he, Ken, and, Ken and my brother came around with the dinghy. I jumped in the dinghy, and we chased this shark for, I'm going to say, over two hours, right out in the middle of the bay. No wire trace, just a hook, a sinker and a herring. Anyway, um, we, got it, we got it really tired. I was very tired. My brother was freaking out a lot and Ken was driving the boat. I was trying to handline this thing. And we got it up to the side of the boat twice and I looked back and Ken was trying to tie a gaff with about six foot of rope to the back of the dinghy. The dinghy was, mind you, 12 foot long and the shark was about 13 foot long. I'm glad Ken didn't get the gaff into it. Anyway, I was getting really, really tired. We headed up to the boat two, three, I think maybe four times. And I was that tired. I just went, okay, it's either coming up or it's not coming up. And I managed to snap the line. But that was one one heck of a, an interesting day that, that was. And again, it was just the three teenage boys camping in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Anyway, hope you like that story. I'm going to go to bed. I think the air mattress is leaking a little bit. So, yeah. But at least it's not rocking and, and windy. So, yeah. Nice night ahead, hopefully. Good morning, everyone. It wasn't a bad night's sleep. But I did have to inflate the air mattress three times. That was a bit of a pain. You can just hear the birds twittering outside. I think the wind stopped around about midnight, maybe a bit later. But that's alright. The big question is, is the boat still there? Oh. <sighs> there it is! And it's floating! Oh, that's a bonus. I was worried it was going to be like up there somewhere. Anyway, it's perfect. The sun not up yet. It's over there somewhere. Should come through that gap. Oh, how pretty. Oh, there's the clouds up on the hill. And it's nice and calm in the bay there. We'll go and check out the tide situation and I'll show you what I did with the ropes to keep the boat where it's supposed to be last night. Oh, it's nice and still. I like that. So you'll notice my footprints are all the way down to where the water is. The tide's still coming in. So that's good. That means we're not going to get stranded here this morning. This is my shore anchor. It's just a, a little pick. And I'll put a couple of big rocks on it. So we've got the rope going to 
the back of the boat. You can see the rope there on the back of the boat. And then the other anchor is out the front. So it goes that way. That way the boat's always facing the right way and it doesn't drift in and it doesn't drift out. So that's perfect. Oh, hang on, what have we got here? That could be a little shark cruising the shallows. Let's have a look. Right there, that little V. Let's see if we can see anything there. Somewhere there. So my theory of oysters before breakfast is wrong. It's um, actually high tide now. It's not a very high tide, but it's still high tide, which means the oysters are underwater. We'll cook up some breakfast now, go for a fish, and then either just before we pack camp up, we'll get some oysters, because we'll be out here anyway. So let's go cook up some nice breakfast. Ooh. Ah, my breakfast is served. Looks pretty good. Ooh, yum yum. You can probably hear the winds come up a little bit. We'll give fly fishing a go, but yeah, it was forecast 10 knots, and this feels like 10 knots right away, so I think they might have got it wrong. Anyway, we'll give it a shot. So I'm just tying on some new leader. I like to use 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon. It's strong enough to hold a decent fish and clear enough to not spook all of them. Some will, but not all of them. And that's the fly I'll be using. It's a bit of a nondescript, yeah, I don't know, fuzzy looking thing with a couple of eyes and a, an antenna. Should catch most things in here. I'm hoping for Golden Trevally, Mud Emperor, Queenfish, GTs, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we find. I can just see the bottom here. The sun's still quite low and the wind really hasn't picked up that much, so I reckon we could be in with a chance. Oh, check out that eagle up there. See him? That's pretty cool. So what we're doing is we're looking for any sign of fish, tails, flashes of silver, uh, backs, um, shadows, you name it. I'll try and point it out before I cast. Um, actually, there's all those bait fish. You see them all in the shallows here. Thousands and thousands of bait fish. They've um, come out from the mangroves because the water's come out. And what we're after is probably out here in this sort of first 10 metres of, of shallow mud slash corally sort of thing. If there's something exciting happens, I'll turn you guys back on. Bye. I've spotted a black spot tusk fish about 20 metres away. He's moving quite fast. That's in front of him. Let's see if he goes for it. No, oh, hang on, he could be on it. Yep, he's on it. Got him, yes, got him. All right. Oh, Woo -hoo -hoo. I haven't caught one of these for a while. There he goes, there he goes. I was waiting for this. Just take off like a rocket. Oh, they usually take off really hard. I'm still, still got line here. I 
have to clean this line up. Oh, that was cool. First cast of the morning. And what looks like about a four kilo black spot tusk fish. I think the hook's set. I'm not 100% sure. There he goes. Now he's running. Oh, he just sat there. That was really odd. When I first hooked him, he just sat there and sort of waddled from side to side. Normally the, the runs are longer and blistering. These are just sort of small runs, but he is, he's a really heavy fish, this one. Oh, could be, could even be bigger than four kilos. <laughs> I actually spotted two more um, mud emperor before this guy, and, and everything is just too close um, with the sun so low. But if you have a look at this guy here, when, when he gets a bit closer, these things just glow in the water. They're uh, pretty hard to miss. Especially, I mean, this here is like just over a foot deep. Can you see how green he is? They just, they just, um, yeah, they stand out really well. Look at that, that bluey green colour there. Very hard to miss that on a, on a flat like this. Oops, too much line in. Oh, he's a nice fish. Definitely around the four kilo. Oh, there he goes. Still going. Still, oh. Okay, I'll get a chance to meet him now. He's quite tired. Oh, still a lot of power. Oh, here he comes on his side. This is it. Come on in, buddy. Oh, got him. Oh, oh that's actually, that's more like six kilo. Oh, wow. Have a look at the size of that thing. Oh, go the chompers. Oh, have a look at the size of that monster. Here's every bit of six, possibly even six and a half kilos. Uh, I'm not going to measure him, I'm just going to get him back in the water. Have a look at the size of the teeth. Oh, and the eye, the eye is just, look at that, the blue, the purple. Okay, let's let him go. Whoop. I'll let him go. And, um, yeah. I'll hopefully catch him another day. <laughs> Morning Tusky, loving it. Oh, and there he kicks off. Let's see if we can follow him for a little while. These are just an amazing fish. They um, they grow a little bigger than this, but at this size, I always let them go. How cool was that capture? Oh, that made the morning worth it. It's um, those those fish at that size. You could catch half a dozen in your lifetime. You're doing well. They're um, they're an amazing fish. They don't always eat. And they usually brick you. They'll go. They'll dive right underneath coral, and you'll never get them out. They flare their gills up, and they lock themselves in. Anyway, um, I reckon we'll have another fish. We're actually getting a bit of cloud cover now. It's um, yeah, sort of closing in a little bit. I'll keep going a little bit, but when it's really cloudy, it's uh, almost impossible to see. Like I, I'm lucky if I can see six meters in front of me here. And when the cloud comes over, it's like two or three. I've been searching for over two hours and the conditions just just not favorable like you can't see anything it's only a foot and a half deep here but what is favorable low tide and those oysters over there let's go get some oh there was a fish right there look at that another fish anyway there's some nice oysters right here okay stay here boat these are the tools I'll be using, a cut off butter knife and another sort of broad broad knife. I'm going to try and find oysters that are still in the water, big ones that are still in the water. I find them less salty than ones that have been out of the water for a while. Oh, got him, okay good. So I've just chucked the, stuck the, the cut off butter knife in there and then I'm going to use the other knife and cut his muscle off. There we go. Beautiful. First oyster. Look at that. Nice and easy. And the lemon. Okay, let's get this guy here. This looks like a monster oyster here. He's open and... I mean, I've got him. Okay. There we go. I broke that one a little bit. Right, that's a that's a nice size oyster, it's almost the size of the palm of my hand. Beautiful. Here's a nice one on the side of this rock. Big oyster. 
And we're in. Yep, got him. There we go, look at that. I think they're getting bigger. Look at the size of that, that is the palm of my hand. And check out the pearlescence along the, along the top here. Oh, that's going to be yummy. Bigger and bigger, further I go. Start with three oysters. What I'll do is just cut them off the shell so that the muscle's loose. I really should have, um, yeah, look for these bigger ones first. I think that, that first one was what I call small. That one was probably about that big. It, it actually broke off. But that's cool. We got most of it. And then to eat these, I'm just going to cut a bit of lemon off. Squirt it right on that oyster. Let that sit for a little while. And do the others. I like to get a really nice lemon flavour in my oysters. And yeah, the further you go that way, the bigger they get. <laughs> That was my first one. This is my last one out of the first three. Hook in. Mm. 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 Fresh ocean tang. The tang's from the lemon. But the taste of the ocean is just, just in every oyster. And the lemon just, um, I don't know, just, just adds another dimension. Oh, look at the size of that one. That is huge. If you haven't seen the episode where Nerida, Chris and I went to Tas well, we're in Tasmania. We got abalone, we got uh, mussels, and we got the biggest oysters I've ever eaten in my life. And they were superb. Check out that episode. Mm, these are actually really nice. Look at that one. It's got quite rough now. I'm just going to go back, pack up camp, and head home. Uh, hopefully, I won't get too wet on the way home. So, at least 15 knots, maybe a little bit more. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and people who've donated through PayPal. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.